I would have never joined the Scorpions even if they asked me because Klaus is the sound of the Scorpions. And we've all now been friends for over 45 years. And when they, they were looking for a new drummer, I said, uh, you should try Mickey D. Because yeah. he had been in my band from Up in the Ashes. He had, had been in King uh, King Diamond. Then he joined my band. Then he went on to Motorhead 15 years. Then Lemmy passed. And I said, and I said, you, you got to try out Mickey D, man. But I think in the beginning, they just thought he was like a speed metal drummer. So it was right. Motorhead. For sure. And I said, dude, trust me. Go listen to my album, Up From The Ashes. That's Mickey. Exactly. He's a solid rock drummer. He's killer. He's on fire on stage. I said, he is a not just motor. He's a full-blown rock drummer. And they auditioned him, and now he's been in the Scorpions for seven years. So He's so versatile, like, too. Family. Yeah, it is like a big family, right? And I mean, a guy like Mickey D, so versatile. And I mean, he's been on this show as well. He speaks very highly of his time, you know, playing with you. Um, we had you know, fun. Yeah. What are your sort of recollections of that time with Mickey in that era in the group? Well, you know, Mickey was living in Sweden and John Norm was in Norwegian and Peter Balta came from Germany and I brought big Billy White in from Austin. So I just flew him all out to L.A., and I rented a big house and they all lived together two blocks from me. And we would just rehearse and started right, started writing the album. And, but it was fun because we'd go, all go out and party and hit the club scene and go to the rainbow. And it was fun times, you know, it was, it was before the era of, you know, cocaine, fentanyl, uh, 18 year olds with the AK 47, killing children in grammar schools. I mean, the world was different then, man. Yeah. The world, I can't even turn the epping news on now because, you know, these son of a bitches, these right wing crazy people, you know, go kill children, you know, with an automatic weapon. And every day there's 250 people die of fentanyl. In the 80s, it was just cocaine, drinking, partying, chasing chicks. Yeah. We were all, we were all single. None of us were married. So, you know, we just had great times. And then, and, you know, they'd come to my house and we'd party on the weekends and we'd, we'd jam and we'd go to rehearsal and just write songs. And it was great because I had a lot of input from Peter Baltus, great songwriter, and John and Billy. And, you know, it was a band. It, we got along. We, we were like four guys in a band, five. Um, we were just best friends. Which for me was refreshing because in Dawkin we were never friends. Hmm. You know, everybody in Dawkin, we never we didn't hang out. I didn't hang out with Jeff or Mick or George. Those guys were off with a kilo a ounce of cocaine doing their thing. <laughs> and I was home writing songs. I never got into cocaine. You know, like you say about Mickey D, when he comes to LA, he's been on the road for like a year and a half and he'd call me because my house was in Beverly Hills, like 10 minutes from the rainbow. Nice. They say, Don, come on down, have a drink. And I go, eh, come on, come on, Mickey, come on, come on down the rainbow. So I go down and hang out with him. That's the only time I went to the rainbow. He was persuasive. <laughs> well, I tell him there's only one rule because you'd have all his Swedish friends with them and they're all going, Shalit, he hot, oh, he hot. <laughs> I go, guys, there's only one rule. When I'm here, speak English. Yeah, this is an English right? zone. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. Because Mickey and I have been great friends, you know, for forever. So the only time I go to the Rainbows when Mickey's in town, you know. Or, of course, Lemmy. I'd go down and hang out with Lemmy. 